Autumn in Michigan is hard to beat. The bugs are gone, the breeze is crisp and clean, and the forest turns to brilliant shades of orange, red, and gold. But a few weeks later, when the leaves are down and the moon is out, it makes for an eerie walk in the woods. Shadows dance along the forest floor, and strange sounds can carry through the empty treetops. These are the kind of nights when campfire stories are born. The best stories revolve around cryptids, creatures that people swear they've seen, but have never been proven to exist. The folklore changes from place to place. In the Pacific Northwest, it's Bigfoot. West Virginia has the Mothman, and the Chupacabra roams the deserts. But did you know Michigan has its own? In 87, there was the incident outside of town. There were some scratches on a door casing at the top of the door casing that was obviously dog scratches, but at the top of the door case, six foot tall. This is Yes, Michigan, audio postcards from the Great Lakes State. I'm Patrick Shea, lead podcast producer with MLive. And much like our pilot episode, this story starts with a uniquely Michigan song. If you're from up north, you already know where this is going. We've all heard the traditional urban legend campfire stories, but this is one that's pretty exclusive to northern Michigan, and it'll be around for a while, I think. That's Steve Cook, a retired radio DJ in Traverse City. In 1986, he started working the morning show on WTCM, which involved a lot more than just queuing up country music. We loved playing April Fool's pranks. We found that out very early. Uh, so we got together and said, let's let's come up with something for April Fool's Day. Well, I. I'd always been sort of a student of ghosts and crypto creatures and things like that. So that's why I came up with this idea for a creature called the Dog Man. And I wrote a poem around that idea and sat down. And I realized that that could follow a nice 4-4 cadence of a drum beat. And uh, at the time, we had just invested, if you want to call it that, into a Casio keyboard, which was like a $99 little toy. It's kind of what I thought I was hearing. Oh, yeah. Sounds nice, though. Exactly what it was. A cool summer morning in early June is when the legend began at a nameless logging camp in Wexford County where the Manistee River ran. Eleven lumberjacks near the Garland Swamp found an animal they thought was a dog. In a playful mood, they chased it around till it ran inside a hollow log. A logger named Johnson grabbed him a stick and poked around inside. Then the thing let out an unearthly scream and came out and stood upright. That's how the Dog Man song came to be. It aired across northern Michigan on April 1st, 1987. But what Steve meant as an April Fool's joke turned out to be much, much more. Our receptionist at the time took a phone call and a man said, you know, I heard that song play on the air and that's no joke, that's a real thing. She uh, put that caller through to me, and, and then Jack got on the line, and we talked to this man, and he had had an experience with a creature almost identical to the one described in the song 50 years before, and it just happened to be in a year that ended in seven. That's a key element of Steve's song, and in turn, of the Dogman legend. This Wolfman hybrid is said to appear around northern Michigan in years ending in seven, especially at the seventh hour of the seventh day of the seventh month, you get the point. Steve's song starts in 1887, 
and moves along decade by decade. The song aired in 1987, and then things got weird. The song got very popular, but like most novelty songs, it had sort of a fast flame out and it was gone for about a month. And all of a sudden, we got a call from the Lake County Sheriff's Department, and the sheriff and a DNR officer had been called to a house in Lake County. It was a hunting cabin, basically, and there were claw marks around the doors and windows over six feet tall. And the only paw prints that they could find were of a dog. So um, the sheriff immediately connected the two because he'd been a fan of the song, and he called and said, you know, we've had this incident occur. So the officer and I went out there to take a look at it. You know, he just tried to chew in around the doors. And you could see a dog print, you know, alongside the window there. And so it was, you know, obviously a dog. A practical joke met a local mystery, and the dog man was born. And now, 37 years later, the bipedal canine is still a staple of spooky season in northern Michigan. I would say that the dog man is the most famous Halloween tradition in our family. Mary Galvanek lives on a farm just outside of Cadillac, where she's passing the legend of the dog man down to the next generation. Um, it's something that we look forward to every year. My five-year-old just uh, listened to it for the first time this year, and you could just see the wheels turning in his head. So you just heard the song for the first time? Yeah, I am. She's scared. I was watching it, and then she went behind me and then like, touched my shoulders. And well, then it was listening to the song, someone spooked it. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Mary grew up in nearby Hoxieville in the heyday of Dogman lore. She says the Dogman was everywhere. You know, in uh, 1990, even our teachers would reference the Dogman, let us listen to that song in school, in class. Kids would dress up as the Dogman quite often, and uh, my brother still dresses up as the Dogman. He's got his, like, werewolf Dogman mask, and uh, Uncle Joey, right, wears his every year. He still lives out in Hoxieville. It was actually a pretty big part of our fall season as a kid growing up in northern Michigan. Sure. Would you say that you've ever had a Dogman sighting? I... As a child, we did think we saw the dog. I mean, I think every raccoon that scurried away from us as we walked through the forest was surely the dog man to us. And so we were always out there in the backwaters and everywhere that we would travel to out towards Hoxieville looking for signs of the dog man. And whatever you look for, you will find. Um, so, yeah, we found many signs of him. Whatever you look for, you will find, Mary says. So she knows her dog man sightings were just her imagination. But some folks aren't so sure. Jim Bacon has lived in Luther, Michigan, all his life. And while many towns up north have their own dogman lore, this tiny village is pretty much the epicenter. In 87, there was the incident outside of town. Remember that cabin with the claw marks on it? That happened just a few miles away from Jim's place. Then in the summer of 87, near Luther, it happened again. Had a cabin in the woods, it looked like maybe someone had tried to break in. There were cuts around the doors, could have only been made by very sharp teeth and claws. He didn't wear shoes because he didn't have feet. He walked on just two paws. We went out the next day and looked at it, and you could see the scratches on the, on the door casing, and I can remember being out there and seeing it. To drive through Luther, you'd have to take the back roads, and you might miss it if you blink. There's a hardware store, a church, a couple bars, just the essentials. But surrounding the town are hundreds of thousands of acres of dense woods. The Manistee National Forest, DNR land, hunting properties. Jim says strange things go on out there. He's not the kind of guy to insist that the dog man does or doesn't exist. All he knows is what he saw. We were coming home, and it was out by Bristol, so just outside of town here. 
and a dog jump run across the road cleared the road but its stride was long enough I could have drove between its legs so it was a big dog we had 80 acres and our house was in one corner and we had a grout pit in the back corner when my roommate woke me up and you could see plain as day that there was a dog out in that gravel pit which was half mile away So we jumped in the truck and drove out there, and there's one curve in the road you miss. We lost sight of it, and then when we got there, it was gone, but its tracks were that big around, eight inches to a foot or in diameter. Yeah. So they were, they were big, and we'd never seen it again. Jim is just one of many, many people with dogman stories of their own. And Steve Cook, the DJ behind the dogman, has heard a lot of them. After he aired the song, calls came flooding in from around northern Michigan. As that very day went on, that April Fool's Day of 87, and in the weeks that uh, that followed, people started to really pick up on it, and they wanted to hear it again. And it, it, we sort of divided them into two groups. There were people who were interested in it and people who believed in it. And the calls probably ranged about 50-50 between those two groups. Which of those two groups do you fall into? I'm a skeptic. I've always been a skeptic. Um, I, I'm, uh, I probably have some Missouri blood in me because, as you know, on a Missouri license plate, it's the show-me state. Mm-hmm. So if you show me a dog, man, I'll believe you. But I also believe that there's a power of suggestion in the human mind that once you're given this notion that this thing could be there and it could exist, you can, your mind will play tricks on you and tell you that there are things there that aren't really there. So Steve is not in the dog man believer's camp. But this next guy is pretty much the campground host. As far as dogmen eyewitnesses go, they come to me. I don't have to actively search them out. He goes by Vic Cundiff. That's his alias. He keeps his real identity anonymous. He created the Dogman Encounters website just over a decade ago and started hosting a weekly podcast where people share their strange experiences with canine creatures. I'll put it this way. I don't bat an eye if I have three, four brand new dogmen eyewitnesses contact me in one day who I've never heard from before. Some days when it really gets crazy, I've had as many as seven or eight. Vic says these sightings happen all over the country, even all over the world. But he's aware of the dogman's Michigan roots. Michigan is basically the girl that brought dogmen to the dance. I mean, the term the Michigan dogman, that's how most people found out about dogmen to start with back in the 80s and everything, but I think Steve might have done a little too good of a job with that song because it almost lends itself to just being a folk song, in my opinion, that people listen to and they like to listen to it, but they don't take it seriously. But everyone's different. Some people are going to listen to the song and say, wow, I wonder if that's true. Maybe there is something to that. But society being what it is, I think by far and away, most people who ever listen to the song just, they think it's a catchy tune and Nothing more. But not Vic and his thousands of podcast listeners. Vic says there's no doubt in his mind. These things are real. Does your living room have a couch in it, Pat? Uh, not right now, actually, but generally speaking, yes. (laughs) How about a recliner then? Uh, yeah. I don't believe you. I haven't seen your recliner, so you don't have one. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, Pat. When people take that stance that, well, I haven't seen the evidence to prove the existence of these guys, so I'm not going to believe it. Well, there are a lot of people in the world who haven't seen the ocean also. Any of the oceans, that doesn't mean the oceans aren't there. It just means you haven't seen the oceans yet. So yeah, to answer your question, it's the same thing with me. I've got no desire to prove their existence to anyone. You're either going to believe in their existence or not. It's no sweat off my back. Whether you do or don't, there's so much good information out there about these guys that if you still have the mindset that they're not out there, that you don't believe it, then yeah, more power to you. That's just how it's going to be. I couldn't care less. If you want to hear some of the good information out there about these guys, then check out Vic's show, The Dogman Encounters Podcast. But like Vic, I'm not out to prove whether dogmen do or don't exist. And neither is Steve Cook, 
who put the Michigan Dogman on the big stage. I've talked to a lot of people who have tremendously interesting stories, incredible people who have very interesting stories to tell, and I believe them wholeheartedly that they saw something. I think one of the most compelling that I ever heard uh, came from a, a, a friend of mine who is a professional photographer. Uh, he and his wife tell the story of they had a, a, a pedal boat, one of those small boats that has like bicycle pedals on it and you can motor around a lake that way. And they were out on a small lake near where they live and they just pedaled out into sort of a little cove to watch the sun go down. And they watched a, 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 some sort of an animal, they don't know what it was, came down to the shore at the far end of the lake. And he said it, it was walking on two legs. They thought it was a person at first, or perhaps a bear, but it was far enough away that they couldn't really tell. And it came down on two legs, then it fell down on four legs and started to drink a little bit of water out of the lake. And he thought, well, if that's a man, that's a very odd thing for him to be doing. So they thought, well, it must be maybe like a bear cub or a, a dog or something like that. Well, then it went into the water and swam across the small lake right in front of their boat within 25 or 30 feet. And he said it definitely had the head of a wolf. And that's all they could see was the head and the neck. But it got out on the other end of the lake and he said he was much closer when he got out of the lake and he got out and he stood up on two legs and walked into the woods. And he said, as soon as I saw that head and then saw it walking on two legs, the song started playing in my head. And, um, and this is a guy, uh, a very serious individual who wouldn't go around telling stories about something just for the fun of it. So that story really, really struck me. And in terms of Converting me from being a skeptic, it didn't quite do it, but I tell you, there was a lot of uh, a lot of questions in his eyes when he told me that story. Legends are born of stories told, imagination without restriction. But what does a legend become when the truth outruns the fiction? The decades come, the decades go, people still swear they see. Interlock and Reed City, Mackinac, there was something looking back at me. And somewhere in the Northwoods darkness, a creature walks upright. And the best advice you may ever get is don't go out at night. Yes, Michigan is an MLive production. It was written and produced by me, Patrick Shea. Editing by Jillian Van Strat. For more Dogman lore, check out Michigan filmmaker Rich Brower's trilogy. The third Dogman movie came out this October. Special thanks to Rich Brower for his help with this story and to the North Bar in Luther. Stop by there for some more Dogman stories. Music for this episode from Kevin McLeod and, of course, Steve Cook. Until next time, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to Yes Michigan, and don't forget to rate and review the show as well.